Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. This series of videos will go through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 diagnostic information queries. These queries are available for free at glennsqlperformance.com resources. In this video, we're going to cover Query 5, which is Global Trace Flags. This query lets you see all the global trace flags that are enabled for the current instance. The documentation for DBCC Trace On is available right here. Now let's run this query and see what information that it returns. As you can see, I currently only have two global trace flags enabled. Newer versions of SQL Server, such as SQL Server 2019, generally require fewer global trace flags to be enabled compared to older versions of SQL Server. This is because Microsoft has done a pretty good job of having modern versions of SQL Server automatically do many things by default that used to require a trace flag. So what do these two particular trace flags do? I've got some basic documentation for each of these trace flags in my script along with links to deeper documentation for each one. Trace flag 3226 suppresses logging of successful database backup message to the SQL Server error log. Failed database backups are still going to be logged, and you can still query the MSDB system database to get your complete database backup history. Having trace flag 3226 enabled helps keep less useful information out of your SQL Server error log, and also makes it easier to find more important information. I think all instances of SQL Server should have trace flag 3226 enabled. Trace flag 7745 prevents query store data from being written to disk in case of a failover or shutdown command. Normally, this is not a big issue. On the other hand, if you've got a large, very active database with lots of query activity, especially ad hoc query activity, you might have a large amount of query store data in memory that hasn't been written to disk yet. Writing that query store data to disk could take a significant amount of time, which could make a SQL Server failover or shutdown take much longer than usual. The downside of trace flag 7745 is that you could lose some query store data. Any query store data that has been collected but not yet written to disk will be lost up to the tie window defined with the data flush interval seconds setting. Despite this, I also think that all instances of SQL Server should have trace flag 7745 enabled. So you might be wondering, how do you manipulate trace flags in SQL Server? Well, you use a series of DBCC commands. So the first command we're going to run, again, is the same one from the script, which is DBCC trace status negative 1. And that shows us all the trace flags that are global trace flags that are enabled on our instance of SQL Server. Now, if we want to disable 3226, you use DBCC trace off, just like you see right here. And when we do that, that's going to disable that trace flag. And then we can run trace status one more time. And that's going to show us that, yes, that trace flag is disabled. And if we go back and use DBCC trace on 3226 negative 1, that will turn it back on. And we can confirm that by running trace status negative 1 one more time. And that shows us both trace flags are actually enabled. And it's important, if you want a global trace flag to be in effect, you need to set it as a startup trace flag in SQL Server Configuration Manager. Otherwise, if you set it this way with DBCC trace on, next time you restart SQL Server, that trace flag is not going to come back. So you need to make sure to set it as a startup trace flag. And I've got more details in my blog post right here. Let's take a look at how to enable a startup trace flag in SQL Server. You go to Microsoft SQL Server Configuration Manager and start it up. And then once you get there, you go to SQL Server Services and you find your instance of SQL Server and you right click and pick Properties. And then one of your choices will be Startup Parameters. And you just type in negative uppercase T and then the trace flag you want to enable. And then you hit Add. And after that, you hit the Apply button, and you'll get a warning saying that it won't go into effect until you restart the SQL Server service. So that's fine. Go ahead and click OK, and then click OK to get out of here. And then the next time SQL Server restarts, that trace flag will go into effect. And if you want to enable a trace flag without restarting SQL Server, just use DBCC trace on like I showed you previously. This is Glenn Berry, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.